What's going on, everybody? Shadow Chucker again, December 15th, probably about, yeah, about 11.30 in the morning. Um, I am actually um, in Kansas City right now, one of our yards, doing my 34-hour reset. Uh, I've only been driving for five days, and my 34-hour reset ends tomorrow at 1, 1.40 in the morning, so I'm going to get up early and take another load and get my ass moving to get more miles, because I'm only working until... At the latest Monday, and then I'm going home, and I'm going on vacation for two weeks. So I wanted to get that video to you guys at the end of orientation, <laughs> uh, but unfortunately I didn't get to do that. I got my truck assignment, and I was up till about two in the morning, loading everything out of the rental car into this truck, setting it all up, get my CV hooked up, all that good jazz. So I was up till about two in the morning that night. Was not about to make a video. I spoke with my DM, and she wanted to know if I was going to run. You know, starting that night or the next morning? Obviously the next morning. I'm not running at night. I, I don't care for running at nights anymore. I just I don't like being up that late anymore. Uh, so the second day of orientation is just a bunch of, you know, they just cover a bunch of, bunch of stuff, like a lot of stuff. And you are actually there for the full day that day. <clears throat> the longest portion of the second day is the safety brief uh, with Mike Cease. And he, he actually goes over that really well there's a lot of safety stuff in there you know you can get in trouble with some safety stuff but safety is pretty i'd say they're pretty lenient don't don't abuse that but i would say they're lenient as you know they give you a chance to explain yourself if something goes wrong um and they try to work with you to fix it they don't want to fire you they want to bring drivers in here and make them successful that i, I do see that right out the gate uh, even talking to my two buddies that worked here. Well, one of them still does work here. The other one just went back through orientation again to come back to work here. He worked for about a year and then left to another company because they were paying him more. And now he's coming back here because there's a route close to his home to where he can drive um, you know, pretty much locally, essentially, and be home almost every day. <laughs> so, yeah, the driver retention rate's very good. Um, I think they said it's about, uh, what, like a 60% turnover or something like that. It's, it's a low turnover rate compared to the whole as an industry. The whole as an industry has like 100 and something percent turnover rate. We are less than half of the industry's turnover rate at this company. A lot of the drivers that have been here have actually been here, you know, five years or more. So that they, they do hold their drivers for quite a while. The only You're going to get fired, obviously, if you're, you know, doing crazy stupid shit, um, excessive speeding, uh, you hit somebody, you cause an accident, you damage loads. They'll fire you for that kind of stuff, but I mean... They do look at what happened first. Like if you're in an accident, they're going to pull the video footage. They're going to ask you. They're going to, you know, the whole thing they're going to look at. They're not just going to fire you immediately because you got into an accident. Um, the following distances and speeding, they will try to correct it first. You know, they'll you know, talk. They'll call you and be like, hey, this is what we have on video. You know, what's going on? And then, you know, these are the steps we can take to mitigate this so it doesn't happen again. <clears throat> I actually got one for falling too close already whenever I jumped out behind somebody. So that's how I know about that. They weren't mad at me for it. They were just like, hey, you know, we just got the video. You're following a little bit too close. Just go ahead and increase your following distance. And, you know, just... Yeah, just increase your following distance so you get more reaction time. I was like, that, that's fine. Uh, I was like, I understand. And she was, you know, just real polite about it. The company is very forgiving. But don't abuse that. You know, don't abuse it with any company whenever you hear that they're forgiving. Um, so, yeah, that was the, that was the second day. Uh, third day, we... Both groups came in. Company and lease purchase. At the very beginning, they talked to everybody. I can't remember what it was they spoke to us about during the morning on the third day. But after the morning portion, they released the company drivers to disappear until <clears throat> until 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, somewhere in that window. And they keep the lease purchase drivers in there because one of the lease purchase the guys that they have with the company that's been with them for a few years comes in and talks to us, goes over a little bit of the lease purchase stuff. I really need to get my fucking hair cut. Um... Now, if you're a company driver, you can sit in for this portion as well if you want to get some more information on the lease purchase and decide you want to switch over to lease purchase instead of the company driver. Uh, the guy that came in and been with the company for five years, and he's a, or he's going on to six years. He's pretty close to six years. Uh, he said within the first five years, he's made over $700,000 with this company. They will run you if you let them. He said this year he's on track to make $160,000. So that's, it's very impressive the amount of money you can make as a lease purchase driver. Now, he... I'm pretty sure his trucks are all... I think he owns a couple and his trucks are paid off. You know, five years he's been here, he's making that kind of money. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then once he's done with that and, you know, the other people are done with their portion of talking to us about, you know, the rest of the lease purchase stuff like the, the contract and everything like that, then they take the lease purchase drivers and they drive us over to the uh, 
the main terminal and the shop that's over there and they let you walk through the vehicles that they have available for lease purchase at that point um, if you see a vehicle that you like while you're going through them you know you hold on to that key you let them know and they'll tell you to hang on to that key and that's the truck they're going to assign you to once you sign your contract or while you're selling your contract, I should say, because they put your information into the computer that has the truck number and everything on it. Um, so there's only so many trucks that they have at any given time. It's a rolling inventory, so if somebody quits or somebody gets fired, they'll bring that truck back and it gets put into the inventory of available trucks. So even if it's not there on the yard, they will bring it to the yard to put you in it. <clears throat> so when we did ours, there were a bunch of internationals. Uh, I think the oldest one was like a 2020. And I think the highest mileage I've seen on one that somebody picked was like 270 something thousand miles uh, some of the other ones they were down at like you know 60,000 miles and they had a few brand new internationals that were like just going through the shop to get their stickers put on and their IFTA and the decals for the company and all that stuff done then they had two older freight liners that were both manuals they don't really have very many manuals in this company both of those were manuals though I think they were like a 2019 or a 2020 and there was one Volvo the one female in our group took the Volvo. Uh, there was an older guy that took one of the manuals. Like he didn't even, he got in there. He's like, "Man, this is my truck. It's man, I'm taking this." We we're like, "Okay." And then there was a, another guy who took the other manual. They they both chose those. And then everybody else took these internationals. <clears throat> now, according to that lease purchase guy and some of the other drivers I've spoken to, the, the manual or the god dang it, the manuals, the internationals are the best for the fuel economy and for driving in wind. Apparently, they cut through wind better than any of the other trucks for some reason. He, they think it's that gap right across the top kind of helps just cut it and let it glide around. Um, now, with that being said, when we started out picking our trucks, there were quite a few of us that wanted freight liners. And because these internationals were on the lot and people you know, were telling them, oh, these are great trucks, these are great trucks, these guys decided they didn't, they didn't want the freight liners, they didn't want to wait for them to come in, they were just going to take these internationals and that was going to be their lease purchase truck. I was the only one that was like, I'm not doing that, I'm going to wait. And actually, I think there was one other guy who he decided he wanted to get put on the wish list for a 2022 brand, brand new whenever they came in. But she told him, no, I think he did cancel that. Yeah, because she told him they don't know when they're getting them in because they had a few come in this year. And with that whole chip shortage thing, they don't know when they're getting the next 2022 models. It's going to be sometime next year. And there's already a list of people on that wish list for those. So he ended up taking an international. <clears throat> I was still set in the, my ways of, I like my Freightliners, and I'm going to wait for a Freightliner. So everybody else got to sign their contracts, and I was like, I didn't get mine. She was like, we'll, we'll deal with you in a second, you know, and I was like, all right. So when everybody was done, she was like, so so you want an international, or a Freightliner? I was like, yes. Yeah. She was like, so what do you mean by you're going to wait? You want, you're going home? And I was like, no, you can put me in a temporary truck. That's fine until, you know, one comes in, and I'll come and get in that one. And she was like, oh, okay, that's fine. And I was like, well, first, can you check the Owensboro facility to see if they have, might have one available? And she was like, absolutely. You know, that's a different page, but I don't think they have any either. She checked, and they didn't. And she decided to refresh the, because you know, I said it's a rolling inventory. She decided to refresh it. And a 2022 Freightliner had just happened to show up on the yard we were at. Not even maybe, you know, two to five minutes before this. Like, we had seen it because, you know, we went, out, went outside. Just some, of us, some of the guys were smoking. The rest of us were just chit-chatting. And we seen the twenty. We seen the truck come in. And we just you know thought it was one of the drivers or whatever. Well, one of the drivers either quit or been fired. So there's this brand new 2022 Freightliner. That the rest of the group didn't know about because you know they all already just said we're going to take our internationals. And she didn't want me to tell them that because you know she didn't want them to think she was lying to them. She really wasn't. It whenever you refreshed it, it literally just popped up on the list. Like it had just got put on there. Everybody else had already signed their contracts minutes before this. So I was like, I will. Uh, I will go out there and look at it. Grab the law or grab the book for you. The truck book i looked at it everything was great except for the chair and like one little spot where it looks like he probably smoked in this truck and burned a little spot right underneath the chair like on the floor which i need to scrape it with a razor blade fill it in with some you know some kind of putty or something and then just blend the color to match the floor it's not big it's like a, it's a really tiny freaking hole um and then he broke the armrests kind of not really broke them as much as he stripped out the right side one he popped one of the airbags so it's like sticking out of the chair i need to get this chair replaced but thankfully i paid into that maintenance plan that's gonna be replaced for free so i was like yeah i'll take this truck 2022 6800 miles on it that's it my truck engine is freaking beautiful the rest of the truck's beautiful there's no damage to the outside of it there's no no damage to the inside of it really as far as that matter either except for he decided to cut the fucking net 
for the upper bunk. I don't know what the hell compelled him to do that. He probably put the damn thing up there somehow or down here, put a bunch of shit behind it, tied it down too tight somehow and couldn't get it open and cut the fucking thing like a dumbass. So I got to get that replaced. I mean, I don't really need it because I don't drive with anybody, but I don't want a, something damaged in the truck. That, that kind of irritates me. Uh, so, uh, after all that, this is why I didn't get you guys the video. I think I, I don't know if I already said it at the beginning of the video. I'm scatterbrained. Uh, the day that I got my truck, uh, my DM got a hold of me and we started running the next day. But that night, I set my truck up, set my CV up. I was up till two in the morning, so I didn't make you guys a video. So, the next day I get my load. But I told her to call me at seven in the morning to give me this load whenever she got in. You know, as soon as she got in, I was like, go ahead, call me as soon as you get in and we'll take a load. She was like, okay, she didn't do it. So at about 11, I sent her a message, sent her 11. And she decided to call me then and gave me a load. So I didn't roll out till, you know, 11 or 12. Which, that one kind of irritated me because it set the rest of my week fucked up because I was running into the night every day after that because of this which I mean it's my first week me and her are trying to get to know each other we're trying to work everything out work the kinks out which she's, she's she seems really great I, I, I do like my the DM that I have right now she seems really nice um so we're, we're gonna work that out tomorrow hopefully we'll fix all of this because I'll start running in the morning tomorrow as opposed to the afternoon um so for me running you know, we were trying to figure out how many, how much money we could make and the miles and everything we could get. I've been running for five days. I ended yesterday for my 34-hour reset, and I already have over 2,800 miles. And the vast majority of it, like they told told uh, tell us, it's drop and hook. I did one live unload, and that's it. The rest of it for me has all been <laughs> drop and hook. Now, the live unload is optional. You don't have to take live unloads. She, um, the load that I was supposed to take last week on Friday up to Pennsylvania from, where the hell was it coming from? I was going to get a load on Thursday to go to Owensboro, go from Owensboro up to Pennsylvania and deliver on Saturday. Now, my DM called me and she was like, hey, you know, we have this load for you to deliver up in Pennsylvania. It'll get you started on the glass load, glass and paper load. And I was like, okay. She was like, now the problem is you're going to deliver on Saturday, but we can't get you a load back until Monday because they're not open on Sunday. So you just be sitting. She was like, do you want to do that or do you want me to try to find you something else to keep you running? And I was like, either one's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll do either one. I can sit there or I can run. You know, it's the first week. I'm figuring the company out. She was like, no, no, no. It, she's like, I'm asking you. This is this is up to you. So I'm asking you which one you want to do. And that threw me for a loop. I was confused. I was like, what do you, what do you mean? And I was like, oh, that's lease purchase. Like, I'm not used to this side of the house. Company drivers, if they give you a load, you have to take it. I mean, you can, you can turn it down, but you have to have a reason why you're turning it down. Like, it better be valid. Like, you know, I, I don't feel comfortable driving into New York City or into Canada, or in California, something like that. Um, or, you know, hey, I looked up looked it up on Google Images, and I don't I don't feel comfortable in my skills that I can back into that place. You know, it's a blind side back or something. They, then they'll be like, okay, we'll find somebody else, we'll get you something. Lease purchase, they call you, and if you don't want it, you tell them, I don't want it. And if you say, why? Well, I don't want to do that one today. I want something else. They're like, okay, and they get you something else, which... It's nice, but it's weird. You know, it's some, one of those things I have to get used to. So I was like, you know, I'll take I'll take another load so I can keep running. Uh, see if you can find me something. And she was like, okay. So a different DM calls me and she's like, hey, uh, your DM said you wanted something, you know, to keep you running. And I was like, yeah. She's like, okay, well, I have this load um, that needs to get delivered for TJ Maxx. And she was like, it is a live unload. Well, she didn't tell me live unload at first. And I was like, isn't that a live unload? She was like, it is, but you get, you know, you get compensated. You get paid 200 and I think it was like $230 for it. And I was just like, I'll do it. You know, it's a little extra money. I'll do it. First week working. Wasn't sure I was going to get a bunch of miles. So I was like, I'll take the 230 bucks. Well, before that, I and mean, I was tempted to turn it down because my buddies had warned me about the TJ Maxx loads. They were like, don't touch them. They're live unloads. <laughs> I was like, okay. But... You know, that, I caught, once she said 2.30, I was like, screw it. First week, I don't know if I'm going to get miles, I'm going to take it. So I took it, and I went and delivered it, and uh, I delivered it early, Qu quite a bit early. It put me ahead of schedule, which was really nice. I uh, delivered it, and actually, no, no, that wasn't the one I delivered early. That one I delivered, it was like earlier in the day, not early, early. It was earlier that day, but it was supposed to be delivered that day at 10 or 11, I think. I got there the night before, like 11 at night. So I unloaded at 7 or 8 in the morning. Um, it, it only took me like 15, 20 minutes to unload this trailer because it was only a portion of it that was getting unloaded. The other half was going to a mall. That's the part that sucked. 
So the first, the, the live unload portion of it was at like a little strip mall. There's like five or six stores and, you know, TJ Maxx is the end store. So I just drove around the back, all, past all the docks. And I parked beside their building because if I would have backed into the dock, my truck would have been in the road. So I parked beside the building, like behind it, you know, just right against it. And 15, 20 minutes, live unload, 230 bucks. Got back in the truck, pulled forward. They resealed the door so I could take it to the next TJ Maxx stop. This is the one that I didn't like. You go to an actual mall and you have to back into the building. And it's not like the normal ones where you got these massive bay doors and you can park, you know, three, four trucks in there. There's a bunch of docks. It's one dock and it's just wider than the truck. Like you can squeeze in there and crank your handle down to drop the trailer. And that, that's about all the space you got. So I had to back into the, this mall where all the cars park. And then I had to, well, first I had to go over there, drop my trailer that I had that was loaded, hook up to one that's in there, dock that's empty, pull it out, drop that one, hook up to the one that's loaded, get it on, uh, the doors popped by the guys that work there, back that one into the building, disconnect from it, sign the paperwork, hook back up to the empty, and then leave. <laughs> so TJ Maxx is a fucking process. That does kill some of your time doing all that for them. But, you know, it's 230 bucks. It's not too bad. The mall, the mall spot to back up into isn't as bad as it sounds. You just have to be comfortable backing into something that you can't see inside of once you got a portion of your trailer in there. Um, after that, I went to Marshall's, did some stuff for them. Theirs was tricky because you go to like parade grounds and some other facilities. It's, theirs is a little more tricky. That one kind of irritated me a little bit, just trying to find where everything was for that. Nobody really explained it very well. Not on my DM, on the people we were shipping for. Like I called them and they were like, we, I don't know, let me transfer you to this person. They transferred me and they were like, you don't know where you're going? I was like, I got an address, but there's nothing here. And they were like, no, you have to go into the fairgrounds, like through the booths that are there and everything, and go all the way in the back, go all the way around this massive lot, find the trailers, grab a trailer, call this number, let them know what trailer you have, and then you got to go all the way around the lot the rest of the way to come back out. And I was just like, what the hell? So figured that out. But yeah, 2,800 miles plus $230. Tomorrow I should get my settlement sheet, and I will try to break that down for you guys since I'm, since I'm going to uh, start running tomorrow instead of uh, Friday. They have me scheduled to pick up a load on Friday, which is like a 48-hour reset. Or no, it's over 48 hours. Fuck, it's like 50, 60-hour reset. Uh, they have me pick up a load on Friday that's going to get delivered on Monday, if I remember correctly. It's it's fucking weird. Like the No, 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 sorry. It wouldn't get delivered, delivered Saturday, man. Look, thinking of something else. Um, but yeah, I called my, the late-night dispatch, you know, uh, after hours, and they were like, we'll check for you if you can pick it up early you know we'll call you back i was like okay they checked i can pick it up early tomorrow as soon as my clock's done so i'm gonna pick it up at like eight in the morning because that's when they open and i'm gonna deliver it friday instead of saturday that way i can get more miles by monday before i go home because that's you know thursday friday saturday sunday monday it's another five days i could probably clear another 2800 to 3000 miles first two weeks that would not be terrible that'd be some great paychecks once i get this paycheck or the, the settlement sheet, I'll try to make a video for you guys if I have time. Since I, whenever I do run, I usually run, you know, 10 hours a day. And when I get stopped, I eat something, you know, take a shower every other day, um, try to relax, call my wife, and then go to bed. So I don't, that's, that's the reason it's taking me so long to get you guys videos. I don't have that, all that extra free time like I did with Land Air, where they were getting me some miles, but it was more just the guaranteed pay. Here, they're actually getting me miles because I can turn and run those miles, and they know that, and I've been dropping stuff early. So um, that, that's that been really nice. So this lease purchase side, though, you guys cannot mess yourselves up. Like, you really can't. If you are worried about it, go ahead and come into the company side, see how this company runs. If you guys want to come over here, you can ask, ask me all the questions you can. This one, I... You know, like I said, I've been studying this company for a year and a half, two years. I'm not studying, researching into them until I could get over here and that whole time researching i mean shit i've still stayed researching it even though i couldn't get hired because of that one ticket i still stayed looking at this company just because i couldn't find anything wrong with it and i still can't so that's a good thing and i'm actually happy right now like they just leave you the hell alone you got your dispatch they leave you alone you pick your now you have to be careful with your fuel because there is you know the fuel tax that you have to worry about with that but they'll the the, the uh, lease purchase guy that's been here for, you know a couple years he'll explain it to you it's actually pretty straightforward and simple there's certain places you stay out of and then there's other places you want to fuel up at and you know don't fuel up like the whole truck fuel up for your load so you're not losing money uh, like right now i got less than a quarter tank because i don't i filled up my whole truck to do that thousand mile load because i know you know i was going to get the fuel surcharge back and i knew it was going to take me a lot to get over here and i did not want to fuel up in um was it indiana 
I think, yeah, I think it was Indiana. I didn't want to fuel up in Indiana because their fuel tax, they have three fuel taxes and you only get reimbursed one of them. So that's one of the places he'll tell you when you go through orientation, don't fuel up there. So you can go company, absolutely, and then you can switch over. But if you go company to lease purchase, you can't go from lease purchase back to company because the, I think I explained that one in the first video where they have to depreciate the value of the truck and then they think you're trying to take the truck to over there. It's If I didn't explain it, make a comment and I'll re-explain it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you, you can't really screw yourself. I mean, I would say if you've been driving for at least six months, with you know another company not not some local stuff if you've driven over the road for at least six months and you know how to back you know how to keep track of your hours you know how to log properly um give it a shot come come over and give it a shot on the lease purchase side of the house you're 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 gonna make money you you can't really lose money i don't understand how people say that when i know there are lease purchase companies where you can lose money now <clears throat> When I say you can't lose money, like if you're not turning down your loads and you're fueling correctly, you can't lose money. And a lot of people have the misconception that you're losing money if you walk away from a lease also, which you're not. You make as much money, if not more, than a company driver as a lease purchase driver. But if you walk away, the only money you lose is that 1400 that's already in that um, escrow account. You don't lose any of your normal pay. So you were basically driving as a company driver anyways. <laughs> now, I, I, I get what they're trying to say, like you're losing money because all the money you paid into the truck. If you actually think about it, you technically don't pay any money for these trucks. These trucks are owned by the company. The company is paying you basically like you're an owner operator and then just taking the money back to pay for the truck. So you're not actually paying for these trucks. The company is essentially giving you a truck for free at the end of five years. Like you were working for a company as a company driver, but you're making more than a company driver. And you still have benefits, and if not like healthcare benefits, but you still get, you know, your bonus. Uh, you get money whenever they do like benefits for the all the drivers, and you're not able to get to a terminal. They give you like gift cards and stuff. I just got a fifty dollar um, gift certificate for the company store. I've I've only been here a week. Like, you, you, I don't understand how people say you're losing money by leaving a lease purchase uh, lease purchase position. You don't. You still made money than most of the company drivers here, unless they've been here for like, you know, 10, 20 years or whatever. You're making more money than them. The company's paying you to drive as an independent contractor and then just taking that money to pay for the truck. So the money that was already theirs is just still theirs and you're getting a truck at the end of five years. Or earlier if you pay it off earlier or if you have an older truck that you pick and pay it off in two to three years. You, you can't lose. It's a win-win for you all the way around. Uh, so yeah, if you guys want to come over, um, let me know. I will actually get you my driver code for this one. Um, whenever, if you guys do decide to come over, you know, just hit me up. Let me know you want my driver code so you can uh, let um, your recruiter know who hired or who referred you over here. And yeah, I mean, if you don't want to come over here, don't come over here. Like I said, you know, I'm never going to try to get you guys into a company or get you guys to leave a company. I give you the information. And then you guys decide for yourselves. It's that's how it'll always be. Now, if I remember correctly, my email for you know doing the trucking stuff is shadowtrucker210 at gmail.com. If you don't want to put stuff in comments, you can always go to the email and email me stuff. And I will respond on there when I have time. If you want to just do the comment thing, go ahead and do the comment thing and I'll respond on here as well. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, as I, as I figure out some more stuff, I'll let you guys know. But as of right now, everything's going as good as it could be. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely, you know, keep following. Or not not subscribing and stuff, but if you want to subscribe, subscribe. I'm actually really surprised by how many of you are subscribed and how many of you have actually watched all these videos uh, in these last few months since I've been with Land Air to now. And the guy, those of you that are still following, uh, I'm actually uh, glad you guys are watching so you can learn some of this stuff if you don't already know it or just you can get information on the companies that that you might want to come over here um yeah as i find out more you know i'll keep you guys informed just like before and hopefully it'll be a lot better or hopefully it'll stay a lot better with this company how it has been so yeah um you guys stay safe out there and you know, best of luck to you talk to you next time